Okay, so let's talk about how we might make a pH diagram for a refrigerator if we only really know what's in the TS diagram and the assumptions. Okay, so we got to know the assumptions, they help. So here I'm going to draw our phase envelope in. Remember under here is liquid and vapor and then out over here is liquid and out over here is vapor. And I'm going to draw the same thing for the pH diagram, which has a little different shape to it. And fortunately, that's, uh, that's the same though. Liquids on the left, vapors on the right, super critical up top. Okay. So here I want to propose a different method than I proposed for the ranking for doing these images. So uh, on the left, I have, I'm going to have a TS diagram that I've more or less got memorized. Uh, but on the right, I'm going to talk through how I work out what's in a pH diagram. So how do I work this out? Well, I know in a refrigerator, there's a step that's at high pressure. So I'm going to put kind of just a dotted line across high, someplace in high pressure. So I know to think about that. And then I've got another step that's at low pressure. Okay, so the high pressure step is a heat exchanger. Uh, so we've got, we know one of these will be a heat exchanger. We know the other one will also be a heat exchanger. And we know that the thing that is happening in the high pressure heat exchanger is we're taking something that starts as a vapor and we are turning it into a saturated liquid. Okay. Uh, so if I look at my upper dotted line, where does that intersect saturated liquid? That's going to be, I'm going to circle it in pink. That's going to be right there. Okay, so that is, that is a known spot. And then, so I'm, that's where that ends. And so that dotted line to, out to the left doesn't do anything. But I know we kind of extend to the right because I started as vapor. All right, so how did I get to be high pressure? Oh yeah, I got to be high pressure because I went through a compressor, right? There's my, my compressor. And my compressor started with a saturated vapor because it came out of just boiling. So I'm gonna circle that in blue. Boom, there it is. Came out of a saturated vapor. So, um, and then to in the compressor, it goes from saturated vapor at low pressure to superheated vapor at high pressure uh, because of the action of the compressor. So that is, is a thing that puts work into the system. So we go from this little blue dot down here up and it's gotta be at a higher enthalpy, right? When it lands. So let's say it's gonna land here. So boom. Okay, so there's there's, I've got two things, and I haven't numbered them yet, mind you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to number them last. All right, what's my last unit operation? Well, my last unit operation is a valve. And a valve, if we remember its energy balance, it's delta H equals zero, right? Well, delta H equals zero means uh, on a pH diagram, that's a vertical line. So this has got to just go bam, straight down, it's a vertical line. And so there we are. That is our shape. And I know we go from saturated vapor at low pressure to superheated vapor at high pressure through the compressor. So that's what gives me my arrows. So let's go back and talk about the TS diagram. Well, the TS diagram has a bit that's at low temperature, which is also low pressure. And it then goes into a compressor. So the compressor is on the same side of the diagram. And if we were uh, reversible, we'd end up there. Oops, I should make that a dotted line. I'm going to cheat and make it a dotted line with an eraser. Uh, but really, entropy goes up. So we end up here, the superheated. And that follows a constant pressure line down here. And it hits the phase envelope and goes horizontal. And then you get a saturated liquid. And then uh, after the saturated liquid, so that's in the heat exchanger. So after the saturated liquid, we have 
a valve to go back down to the low pressure. And it turns out, let's see, the valve is not constant entropy, it's constant enthalpy. So actually the entropy goes up. So it goes something like this. Boom. That's that's what we that's what we ought to look like. Um, around in here. So everyone double check that you got it looking like that. And so what are, and then this down here is our other heat exchanger. So how do we number these? I propose, I think we were calling this one, this two, these all match. This out here is three and that down there is, is four. And the numbers aren't so important as long as you have the unit operations correct in the right order, right? That we have heat exchanger at low temperature that gets you a vapor, which we then compress. And then we have another heat exchanger at high temperature, which gets you a liquid and then a valve in the middle. So there we go.